dude strapped the fuck up with guns on him, and he's just like, you want America? You got to fucking come take America. It was like, you never in this fucking day. Like, I know that's why our military is big enough that we don't have to necessarily stand outside with guns, but it is, like, interesting to think about which celebrities, quote, unquote, or which people. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Nigga, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I can see Arnold. You're back, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I can see Arnold Nigga fighting <laughs> with the people. I could see LA getting invaded on that scale and everyone just being like, I am out of here. Is Arnold American or is he American when it's convenient? I I feel like Arnold would be. He was would the governor of California. The, he was, he type. was, but also fight. he is what, Australian, right? Austrian. No, he's Austrian. Austrian. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Australian. <laughs> huh? Australian. All the way back, mate. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't keep it wild. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. I don't know if Arnold Schwarzenegger would like really fight, or do you just believe that? I don't. I literally don't know that. who. I can't name one that would fight. That's what I'm saying. Like, what? What celebrity? You said Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't know why you said that. I just felt you think like Bruce Willis gonna I... really fucking fight? Yeah. Okay, you're crazy. Then go you home. Who's I think America? Uh, Chris Evans. Chris Evans. I feel like those oh, you're just type saying of people. stuff. Yeah, you're just, just saying, saying stuff. stuff. That's what I, can hear I think I can Chris hear. Evans would speak up. I don't see Chris Evans bringing up arms. But I do kind of see Arnold anybody. bringing up arms. I could see. Ar- I could actually really. See I just don't see Arnold doing it for America. Yeah, Arnold loves America. I don't know if he just loves it when it's convenient, man. Mm, I don't think. I think he really loves. You think it's a real rich American love there? I don't think it's a real patriotism with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, you gotta watch some Arnold speeches. Yeah. He, Why the he, fuck would I want to watch some America. Arnold speeches? I don't know. Oh, because you were forced to. Because he was your governor. I wasn't necessarily forced. I mean, he also spoke. Yeah, you care about politics as well. You were forced. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, you were forced I wasn't forced. <laughs> I, I, I like watched Republican national conventions and stuff when he gave speeches. What the but fuck? Also, what were you doing as a kid, did. bro? You, what, no, I why are like you torturing yourself? It was the first fucking time that, uh, you watched the Super Bowl. I watched up. the DNC. What? It was like the first time a celebrity was No, you was said that RNC. High Don't switch it now. Like political, I feel like, stage. It's no, also Jeffy the first the, time. Jesse the Body Ventura was fucking um, governor before him. Or Ooh. senator. Senator. He was, was a wrestler. He, he was, was senator of Minnesota. Yeah, he was the was governor the biggest, of Minnesota. Was, oh, the, Arnold was what? The governor, the governor, well. governor of California. But he was thought, probably the biggest celebrity. Who, that's Arnold? Become, yeah. That's because... Yeah, Arnold's a bigger Trump. celebrity yeah, than bigger. Jesse the Body of Ventura. So I felt like a lot of people watched his political road because i felt like it was like no was i'm really happening yeah we watched political road we didn't watch speeches is what i'm saying like mm. in illinois i didn't care about what was going on in california you've like, never seen like an inspirational video that arnold narrates and it's like when i came into this country no <laughs> and this no. is a california thing He's like i could never reach the success if i didn't come to america no, I've and never. He, and it's and it's like all did these you? old. It's like very motivational. There, there um, these exist. I couldn't recall. I didn't them say they didn't exist. I'm saying it's like if y'all didn't know Barack until after he blew up. It's what I'm saying to y'all. Y'all watch it. That's true. Arnold. I didn't know Barack until it. he spoke yeah, at the you, convention. You, you watching mixtape Arnold right now? You trying to hold me? <laughs> you trying to hold me down? Like, oh, you don't know Arnold mixtape tracks? I'm like, nah. He didn't make it to the motherfucking presidency, fam. I wasn't forced to listen to his speeches. That was the closest he could get because he's uh, I know he's not born here. They were that talking was, about that changing that rule that so that he that could he, be a candidate. Yeah, but like, would you have voted for him? I would have been happier with him as a Republican candidate than other people. Was he a good governor? In, uh, a, a he good wasn't governor? actually that bad. I kind of hate to say. I mean, not the, I, I don't feel like I've ever loved any governor. And I thought it was ridiculous when he was, um, when he was. I mean, uh, elected. I thought it was insane, but then he actually didn't do that bad of a job. It's the same thing as people who were in the last like couple of years being like, "Man, if the Rock runs, it's very the Rock. If the Rock runs, it's exactly the yeah. Rock. Yeah. It's LeBron. If 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 the Rock ever ran, he would legitimately in each speech have to like give Arnold a, <laughs> a wave and be like, you know, if it was not for Arnold, I wouldn't be here today. And Ronald Reagan kind of paved the way for Arnold. You keep saying that, but we're not gonna go that far. I I don't know how big of an actor Ronald. Reagan was, so then don't do that. I hear that he was a pretty <laughs> big enough actor that like it was like an actor's running for governor of California and he now was, the governor of California is running for president. He wasn't Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a movie star, bro. No, yeah, you're right. He was a movie star, movie star, and like Ronald Reagan like acted in westerns. Oh, uh, he was in westerns yeah. at that. Oh yeah. They had to tuck most of the movies after they came out. <laughs> you don't think so? 
Where they had to what? Um, tuck, tuck most of those movies. Like, like get rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, it definitely it helped to the propaganda that this Californian guy was a cowboy. Uh, hell you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I think Which he like I think he created his <laughs> brand before he like was that thing. I'm trying to see his 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 movie. His, his you're looking at Ronald Reagan's IMDb. I mean, IMD, no, I, do he got an <laughs> entertainment career? Okay, yeah, he was out here. He was an announcer for the Cubs. He was? Yeah. He was an announcer for the Cubs? Yeah. You're going to become a Reagan fan? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All of a sudden. He was in a lot more movies than I thought. I That's what that's what happened to me. I was like, like oh, that guy was movies. actually this kind nigga of did a movie like star. 26 movies. Yeah, he was kind of a... Like, I don't know if he was Arnold Schwarzenegger style movie star or the Rock style movie star, but I think he was a so good... So he paved the way, is what you're saying? You know, he was a Sebastian Stan. <laughs> Who the fuck is that? Isn't that the guy who's playing Tommy Lee right now? He's like been in a oh, lot of things. Yeah, I, yeah, I He's like been in a lot of things, but we don't really know him. Um, okay. Kind of like Al, Ro- uh, not Al Roker, uh, like Al Franken. He appeared in 53 films. That's, That's a, a lot. lot of fucking That's films. Them Samuel Jackson numbers. Reagan was working. He was working. And then came in was the president film. That is wow. That's well, a nigga that I gotta I gotta tip my hat to though for really reinventing yourself. For really, <laughs> for really being like, yo, who the fuck says I can't do some other stuff? And people were just being like, You crazy, man. You ain't yeah, gonna be president. He spent nearly 30 years acting. To bring it back together, you know that's the Zelensky story too, right? Who? He started as a comedian. Well, Zelensky was a comedian oh, yeah, yeah, and then an yeah, actor. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Had, was like Ukraine, the yeah. biggest star in the right. Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then became the president, got elected with like 67 percent of the vote, so got like overwhelmingly elected. And now he's this dude who's in the bunker. But I, mean, I, I guess it's up. not that fucking crazy now. I mean, we look at Manny Pacquiao. We look at so many people who just like I do this completely different thing, and I get to just serve public office just because i'm popular in this other thing yeah i mean and also i kind of feel like the sensibility of like an artist in what he does he's not he doesn't have a background of just like fucking politics he has a background of actually believing in these things and getting people to believe in them and now he's putting his you know money where his mouth is money with his mouth yeah for sure i don't know how much value it really is like i like to see it but i also be like man we don't I mean, need you. it we definitely need you bonds him quick. to his people. It, it does for but sure. But hopefully, he doesn't die. What you mean? Hopefully, it, it look, fam. It ain't looking up right now. You gotta. You can't just be on the. I, I hear yeah, Russia hit. after you. That's man. Russia ain't scary. playing no games, fam. But look, I commend the man. You know what I'm saying? Nothing else. I think it's fucking dope. I think. I think to see the way his people, have, yeah, leading by example, and to see the way the Ukrainian people have backed him. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you got supermodels who also are standing their ground, being like, it's you know inspiring. what, whatever the fuck we can do. That yeah, that is something that I yeah, I would. It's a love for country that I feel like. Yeah, I, don't I wish know. I had. Yeah, I wish I fucking had it. Honestly. Yeah. I, I get what you mean. Yeah. Like I said, if it happened in LA, <laughs> if it would happen in LA, we'd all fucking leave. We'd all be like, where are we going? No, no, no. no need for this that. isn't my home. I don't need to defend it. No need Take for it. That. You can have it. Uh, welcome to Wine and Weed. Hey. I'm Chris Reinecker, <laughs> aka The Chronosewer, aka Bozanski. That's my mom's maiden name. Okay. Um, yeah, which is a Ukrainian name. That's me showing my Ukrainian pride. Um, you ain't never showed it until y'all was in trouble. Well, I'm showing it now. <laughs> uh, and with me, as always, I'm Sterling Stilo Brim, aka Stiloski. Oh, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Hey. That's, you know what's funny? <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, we would I really have went by that name before. Stiloski? Yeah, and uh, my, one of my boy Elo. I would call him Elo because Elo Whiskey. Because Elo Whiskey used to make up these nicknames for ourselves in high school. So Stiloski is back. Fuck so, yeah. yeah. So that's my Ukrainian background right there. Yeah. So I'm showing pride as well. And standing with the Ukrainian people. And with us on the facts today. Hold on. I'm reading this comment from Victoria. 
And she said, I watched an old episode the other day. See those AKAs where I raw dogged your mama. <laughs> Pippin ain't dead. These hoes just scared. <laughs> I'll knock your dick in the dirt if you talk shit to me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to bring And I just want to I wanna point out the fact that I've grown up and I've matured, guys. <laughs> <laughs> My more polished sure. version of myself now. <laughs> Thank you for taking me down memory lane, okay? <laughs> if it ain't dead, these hoes just scared. I yeah. forgot about that one. I knocked your dick in the dirt. It's that was a long-lasting one, too. <laughs> knock your dick in the dirt. Um, it's Alana. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. I like being here. And today marks what? March 1st? Aren't, aren't no, you happy? tomorrow will be March 1st. Oh, you're right. March 2nd. March so 2nd. this comes out on March 2nd. It March was filmed 2nd. on February 28th. Yeah. <laughs> Things might have changed. Yeah, Black History Month's over. You can celebrate now, Chris. Last <laughs> We're back. <laughs> Ooh, that was close. <laughs> Each year. <laughs> oh, white history. Feels like the purge again. out there. <laughs> uh, this week we're smoking fucking. Oh, uh, yeah. My boy, I wanted to uh, shout out. It's a company my boy just launched called Bud Buds. Uh, that's a membership only thing. I don't know when it's going to be open every day. I don't want to lie to everybody and say, you kill the membership now. But it's like a subscription for weed and the packaging alone. I'm doing a weed camp. It yeah, so it's, cool. I had to feature this. You know, you got to respect good packaging and good marketing. So it's flippity and, 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 and co as well. Wow. The packaging oh. is amazing. Oh, it's, it's both. Gorgeous. Is it the same? No, we're going to smoke two different things. Oh, okay. So that one is flippity and co. Yeah. Let's get a nug cam on that. Sorry, it was, it was empty. <laughs> the packaging is so pretty. The packaging is very cool. There you go. Uh, for for those of you who are just listening, the packaging is obviously like a, a Tiffany, play on Tiffany but it's just a beautiful little. Nu- Ooh, the nug looks pretty too. That's the nug cam for Spliffany and Co. Yep, yep. And then the nug cam for. Fleur, yeah. who sent us this guy. No, it's the same company. Same company. Oh, it's same the same. Company. I same understand. Company. Sorry, yeah, yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's got real flowers on top too. Mm-hmm. They spray them, but they're real flowers. They're real roses. Wow, those beautiful are packaging. Nice. Beautiful packaging, and a new nug. Shout out the butt butts. Shout out the cartel. Appreciate you. Whoa, they have one big old nug in this one. <laughs> His name is Mike Cartel. I'm not shouting out the actual cartel, or am I? The people <laughs> love the <laughs> nug cam. The nug cam is nice. It's got these little. Y'all do like the nug rolls. cam. They do, they do. They, they comment they, about they, the nug cam. They get mad when they don't get the <laughs> yeah, nug cam. Where's the nug cam going? We're going to give you the nug cam, okay? We, <laughs> believe us, we read the comments. We want to do what we're asked to do. This is nice, too. Yeah, and we roll, really should we smoke these pre rolls? Yeah, just get the pre rolls. And if you're out there on YouTube, go fucking check out Stilo's channel. He's been dropping music yeah. the past oh, two yeah. weeks on Friday. These tracks have been amazing. Yeah. The first one is with Aaron Ray and Fabulous. Yeah. The second one is with Nomad P. They're yeah. both awesome fucking They're videos. So Nomad P was on the podcast before. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, and uh, and tomorrow and on uh, this week you drop one with Buddy, who's no, no, also no, a friend week. of the no, podcast. Next week. Well, March then 11. never mind. You just announced it. <laughs> Shit. Damn. Uh, I've been listening to Buddy's uh, like new tracks off his Amazing. new album, We're Super blast. Ghetto. They're yeah. fucking dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, wait, wait, don't wait too long. Don't wait, wait too long. long. Mm. And the other one, the like <laughs> blacked out in the black seat for the black Jeep. Yeah, it's black Ooh. too. Ooh, okay. okay. You got black bra, yeah. huh? I listened to it. I mean, that's all. Like, no, he's like, like oh, I feel Mark's a second. I feel, <laughs> second come come. I feel a little weird listening to it, being like the advocate but of it. There's, there's other, there's another, dope as there's another one called Black that he has with ASAP Ferg. It's really good, too. You check that one out, too. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> um, Should we get to the show? And yeah, we're drinking some Whispering Angel. Yeah, you know. back to our regulars. You know what I'm saying? All right, you going to smoke that one? I don't care. I'll I'm, I'm going to smoke this thing right here. That's tips. I got one. Okay. No, you good, but, but you can smoke that. Do it, do it back. Okay. I'm going to smoke this. All right. With that said, let's get into the stories of the week. Simon Levy from Netflix's The Tender Swindler is charging 20K per club appearance. It seems that Netflix Tender Swindler documentary has given Simon Levy enough notoriety that he's now charging 20K for club appearances. 
TMZ reports that clubs in the U.S. and abroad want to book Lviv to patronize their venues. Spots in Philly, Boston, Germany, and Mexico have asked him to make appearances, and it looks like he's interested. According to the outlet, in addition to 20K, that list also includes bottle service, a private jet, a suite at a five-star hotel, black car SUV service, and two security guards who will be with him the whole time. What It club? sounds like he might end up living the exact life that he told his alleged victims he already had, which includes his recent visit to a Ferrari dealership. It's reported that he's also been earning a decent amount of money on Cameo, where he's charging $200 per video, and he has already made 30K in three days. Yeah, I 200 mean... 200 per video... You gotta He's give him thirty k. Wait, what? He hustling. He hustling. I don't know who's paying for him to do any of that stuff. Like, I don't know what club is like. Yeah, we are gonna give you a black car service, a PJ. Like, who are you? You gonna perform too? A PJ is wild. Is that a normal thing? To no, give? he's ta- he's lying. Yeah, remember that this guy's uh, a liar. He's putting this <laughs> on his. <laughs> he called TMZ because that like, means that he, he that means I'm that charging. in three days he did a hundred and fifty cameos. That's a lot of videos for three days. But you got to just send them out, right? Are they no, all? No, I think I think that was a video chat or something. Yeah, they're not all individual, are they? You, yeah, they're all in. You, you record a personal message for people. You can't just like, what if he had like seven Chris's and he just did seven? <laughs> what up, Chris? My enemy died <laughs> after me. No, I'm joking. It's your boy Simon Levy. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably a bunch of those where he had to be like, hey, I need you to wire me. He's like, no, I'm fucking around. Your he friend gave me 200 bucks. He doesn't like a damn so in distress. It's a joke. Welcome to Cameo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I just don't think that he's actually charging 20000 with a PJ. PJ going to cost you 20000 minimum for the charter. So you're going to be 20000 with the PJ. And on top of that, five-star hotel. He said a hotel accommodate, like, man, restaurant. Like, man, get the yeah. fuck out of here. Nobody's paying you to do what when you get there. Just to be like, Simon Lviv is here. Guard your wallet. Guard your purse. <laughs> <laughs> hide your wallet. Hide your purse. <laughs> we scamming tonight. <laughs> Who's out there scamming? I keep I'm, seeing all these threads on Twitter about him, how him and Anna Delvey <laughs> would have been if they matched on Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's so funny him being like, hurry, send me 50K. My enemies are after. And her being like, oh, the stupid it. bank, they fucked up again. <laughs> but a wire will be there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch that? The she, Anna? No, but I looked. Uh, it looked interesting. <laughs> it it, I watched it. It's like it's, you know. He did not want to watch it. It's an identity theft. <laughs> yeah, it's girl. A, it's a little big of like acting. Like <laughs> it's it's just a little network televisiony. Yeah, but it's it's pretty good once you get past like some of that the decisions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just like, have to like enjoy that it's heightened. Yeah, it's a yeah. little heightened. Yeah, but it's good. Though. It's and good. it's based off a true story. It's a true too, story. Yeah. So I'm like, this is it's really crazy. Her story is crazy. Her story is crazy, but. But like she the, was so the difference close. is like the difference is she wasn't like nobody's as good as Simon. I'll tell you why Simon's that guy. Simon's that guy because Simon's not in jail. He is out and he is posting on socials and he is going to host clubs. And that's why Simon's that yeah. guy. I don't think he's a good guy. I think he's that guy. Is what I'm saying. I think he has done it to the highest level because she still had to go to prison. Yeah. Because she got in trouble for fraud and everything else hmm. because she didn't run her shit seamlessly. Simon has not technically done anything. He has not taken out any money. He has not taken out any loans. Mm-hmm. He has not got any credit cards. He has lived the life solely off of other people, which is fucked up. But somehow, legally, he has skated through all of this shit. Yeah. Do, is he of, like, friends? Like, are his he friends don't need friends. like, I love this guy. My friend's a liar. <laughs> 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 And I, yeah, like, and this he is have my a boy. That was with him at all times. Like the bodyguard must have known. Well, the what baby he was mama doing. too. Oh yeah, and the baby. The mama. baby mama is with him. She he scammed her first. Mm-hmm. She got him locked up. Then he got out, and then she was like, "Hey, you lucky? I didn't press full charges. Now we can do this shit together." <laughs> and they start running the scam together. She be with him every step of the way. He be calling her to sit her. That's love. It is love. They can scam together. Man, that is real love. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely not and they like probably don't like i don't know they is probably, your life fun like what they probably you, be fucking on people with credit card receipts <laughs> people with credit card bills <laughs> Ooh, bitch, put your face in an american express it ain't ours <laughs> <laughs> you, you dirty little boy <laughs> she wild oh man is that baby gonna automatically be a scammer 
Oh, yeah, he's, he's like has to be. I mean, or or, or is it a she? Or it's like alcoholics, um, son. You know, they're like, they're uh, they're like, I'll, I'll never touch the stuff. I'll never touch a credit card. <laughs> 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 Debit only. <laughs> I don't have the money. I don't need it. <laughs> Man, I just feel like keeping that up forever is going to be a whole new game. I guess people just become famous scammers now. And maybe the people in power are like, oh, you get it. Come over here. Well, I mean, he's kind of being coming famous off of not even kind of. He is becoming famous off of being a scammer. First, yeah. he was just getting money. Now he's becoming famous off being a scammer. And no one's really mad at him. Everyone's kind of at first was like, he's fucked up. And then as he kind of like just lived in the moment and, and kind of was like, I'll fucking scam some more. Everybody's got like, <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> you think he should have a dating show? I think he should have whatever he wants. <laughs> I don't. I feel like he could have a kind of a funny dating show. I just don't like. Look, if I'm going to give a dating they show They win nothing. <laughs> At the end, they're all in debt. <laughs> what is the Simon Levine dating show, you think? It's mm. just like like having girls compete for their his heart. Oh, it's a roll. He hands him a credit card. He's done. <laughs> <laughs> you can stay with You can scam with me. <laughs> <laughs> or or the if they the don't get heart. a rose they like check their bank account and it's twenty thousand dollars less <laughs> yeah and they're like oh if i didn't know you could lose money on this game <laughs> exactly yeah. you didn't read the fine print when you filled out the waiver we got you and your money <laughs> they just do different competitions each week i'm down for that i would really watch a, a dating show from him i would too yeah if it was like some kind of thing we had to help him escape his enemies <laughs> 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 He's like in this in this round, <laughs> this game is called "Them Niggas After Me." <laughs> it's like you gotta find girls that don't already know him. Maybe that's the way. Yeah. You basically just gotta find girls that don't already know him, yeah. and then we're all watching them get scammed. <laughs> <laughs> and we all like, "Oh, bitch, don't do that! Don't sign that!" Oh, <laughs> oh it is easy for it. him. <laughs> He's really good at it. Really good. I mean, he is pretty good at it's it. It's kind of like, but like, you know what he really did is he took them all on Bachelor dates. So it is very reality He love bombed them. He love bombed them. But that's kind of what the Bachelor it is, It is, right? it is. A lot of people fall in love so quick. It, it's like a helicopter. Right. It's like that That was the helicopter. You've just never been on a first date in a helicopter. Yeah. You know. Which is swaggy. It is swaggy, but would you do the that? producers did that. Would you, would you, I know an individual, one of my friends, he 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 went on his first date with his wife actually in a helicopter, and you know he does he did like big, oh yeah big, yeah big dates yeah uh, yeah would you would you do like a big first date or do you think you're just setting yourself up I if you can afford it let's say you I can afford think, to keep yeah, doing yeah, yeah. big dates yeah I th I actually think that part of me, um like there's some self sabotage in there where I need to know that you like me for me and yeah, not course. what I can do self for you. No, no, no. <laughs> but like I, if I took you on a date like that for our first date, yeah. you're actually going to lose some points in a sense. Like I would rather us be on an even playing field in the first date. So I can tell if we actually really like each other. I don't really want to trick you into liking me because it's more about then I just go, yeah, but I just tricked you into liking me. Does but do sense? you think, yeah, I hear what you're saying. I do, but I like you as a person and I know you as a person. Thank so you. So <laughs> I don't know if like I would, with my kind of confidence, I would say at least, I would convince myself like, well, yeah, we're going on a helicopter, but she would like me with or without this helicopter. Yeah. So I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and like choose to believe that the helicopter is something that I want to do too. And it's cool, but like that's yeah, not okay. why she likes me. I I, I feel, feel the same way about you though. I feel like that you wouldn't need the helicopter to make a girl like you. So I don't know if I would necessarily feel right. like oh she, you love bombed her with the helicopter. I'm like you can you can keep up the and and I I guess I maybe maybe if like money's not an issue for me if I can just get a helicopter I might be like fuck it let's get a helicopter my girlfriend who I date now yeah there there's our first date was a um uh was a like not our first date but eventually we did a road trip like pretty early in our relationship mm. where we like you know Shit. got to see beautiful california from all over and how do you use the bathroom. van and well we had like a van 
Yeah, I know, but, but like, then y'all got to use the bathroom for real. Like, yeah, um, you can just stop and go in a. I'm just saying, you you get to know each other pretty quickly if it's like early and you're like on a road trip. That's the yeah. My brain goes there immediately. Well, but, it was um, like it was probably something like fascinating and like big for her, where I was like, let me take you around this date that's new to you. Yeah, but it wasn't, so I could see that being like my helicopter. Mm. But I think the helicopter thing, the like, let me give you something, let me give you money, let me do something that is expensive, is a little bit. There's less of like look at the experiences i can give you versus like l- look at all this money girl and then you're like wait do you just like me for the money i wouldn't be yeah, comfortable with somebody you, liking me for the money if you had money you would want to you would probably want to do both no would you not be like oh i want to do picnics on the, just the park and talk and i also would want to do the helicopter and then be like there uh you see the helicopter landing that's for us it like gets really windy. They like, just do a picnic there. <laughs> no, I didn't actually pay for the helicopter. We just get to eat right here. <laughs> <laughs> I just paid to sit next to. Hell. <laughs> so, so you have any brothers or sisters? It's like <laughs> wasn't a good idea. This wasn't a good idea. I just, I don't know. I could only afford half of the helicopter costs. <laughs> they won't take you in the air. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you a picture next to it. That's. Next. I don't know. Well. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes, but if I if I do do something immediately like very cool with somebody, I'm I'm nervous that they just like me for that and not for me. Yeah. So there definitely has to be a picnic be. pretty soon after yeah. the helicopter ride. I just want you not to be mad. I think you're very likable, and I think that if anybody gets to know you in the air or at a picnic, you're just easy to love. Yeah. Wait, you're talking about extravagant Excuse me, you too? left. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to tap back in. I wanted to hear about these extravagant dates. I was saying that, <laughs> like, I don't know if I would like taking somebody on an expensive date for the first date because yeah. I would be afraid that you did kind of love bomb them and mm-hmm. you would, I would almost have an insecurity that maybe they don't like me for me. And just they the just date. like me for the helicopter. So I don't know if, I would feel confident in a relationship where someone got to know me in a helicopter or on The Bachelor versus getting to know me in or real life. Or maybe you take them on the really extravagant date and then you're like, this will never happen again. So if you, you say really that? Like me, the the that day? feels like the epitome of love like, If you yeah. really like me, if you really like me, you'll like me for me. And Our next five dates <laughs> are in a windowless room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, no, I really liked you. You made me laugh. Let's go to the Yeah, room. because you're in a fucking helicopter <laughs> and you had a $50,000 ring on your finger all of a sudden. You think that if Simon, if you met Simon out in these streets and you did not know who he was, you never saw a tender swimmer, mm-hmm. what chance from... No, I saw it. One, no, I'm saying she, oh, yeah. if she never saw it. hypothetical oh, okay. me. Well, yeah, hypothetical you. I understand. From one to ten, what chance do you think, what slither do you think he would have it? Like, maybe, you know, getting a conversation going and getting like a, you should come in on a trip or hang out or type of thing. Probably zero. I said one to ten, whatever. Yeah, okay. One? One? <laughs> one, I guess. I guess one. So there is a chance. <laughs> There's a chance. There's a 1% chance that I go on a trip. That's a, a Can we chance. make wait, it wait, two? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like me going on a trip does not mean I'm getting, I'm taking money out for you. That's a big No, I didn't, I didn't say you did early on. I said trip. Trips. Oh, yeah. He supplied trips early on. I imagine some girls didn't. Every girl probably didn't end with a credit card. He probably missed on a couple of them. Was like, "Fuck, you know, I took her on the trip, and then she wouldn't take the credit card out for me. That was crazy." Yeah, I imagine no stories didn't get told. It's a loss. Yeah. I, <laughs> it's a loss for him. Yeah, it's for sure. I don't like, know how high the, the chances are because I it's higher than one now. Though. No, 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 it's not. You like higher trips? You like? I do like trips. What if but then? What if then you get on the plane and he has a really good personality? I know he and does. He's like, and he has a he good does. story. Yeah, he's he's gotta funny. Have I know he has a personality. He's quick. He's honestly he's, probably super he's funny. Probably and chill. He's probably hella fun. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay, I came down 20K, but like, I had a pretty good time with that guy. <laughs> I mean, one girl was just his friend, right? And still giving him money and was like, while well, he was dating the supermodel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, he had to have been kind of dope. Like, yeah, he had to be pretty cool. He had to be a good talker. And he's probably, smooth. Yeah. yeah super smooth. Definitely smooth. Do you think he? Steve so we've listened to his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> My like one. he's funny. He's I dope. haven't got any money at anybody. I know. I wish. Haven't. Do you feel like you could do this? Do what he did. Um, 
there, there's, <laughs> there's still a white privilege that comes in inventing Anna and Tennis Swindler, and people just feeling like you good for shit. There's yeah. the, people don't just feel like black people are good for stuff. If you tell them, like, hey, I'll give you back that 50000 tomorrow, I don't know how many people are going to just be like, all right, cool. I ain't never heard of that black diamond family that's saying, like, he had all this, like, I could possibly mm. make up a business. But you could probably go down a long enough line and be like, Ladies, that ain't bro. true. There's a lot of racial, true, black man. racial disparities in the scamming industry. It is. Sure. It is. I watched it and said Anna and was pissed. Because I was like, she getting away with a lot of shit just off being a white woman. Mm. She was just in that bitch telling people, trust me. And, they, <laughs> <laughs> and motherfuckers was like, that's fair. <laughs> Why would this white woman lie? <laughs> just giving us shit. I was like, that would not happen if I came in the room with that same energy. <laughs> you gotta have confidence, man. I think man, you can do it. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that you believe I can, <laughs> but I appreciate you. I think you're letting perceived racism stand in your way. I think you could be a twin tinder slender. What? <laughs> Twinder. <laughs> I was gonna leave it alone. I was like <laughs> Thanks, man. I, I wish. I mean, like I, I might do it. I might. I, I like. I dream about it one day of like just being like. I wanted a sugar mama. Have you ever dreamed about a sugar mama? Have Ooh, you ever wait, had a friend I, that had a sugar show. mama? Uh oh, one time. Yeah, one I guy. I, I know a guy too. <laughs> I might be the same yeah, person. I had a friend that had a real sugar mama, and you get kind of jealous because you like, yo, this person just got a crazy condo. A crazy new whip, two new whips. Oh, I know. Oh, some, new wardrobe. When we were like 22, That's I knew saying. another 22 year old who who dated like a bank CEO's wife. I think I know wife. his name. Yeah, yeah. she's got that divorce. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were like he in an like open relationship, like, and I guess they had, he had like young a, ones. I love mustache. Yep. Right <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And idea. like his his wife was like, here's twenty thousand dollars to throw a birthday party. To his most irresponsible friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that too. I remember that <laughs> shit too. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Los Angeles is a weird town. <laughs> yeah, I just was like, you just feel like you never get that lucky. I, you know? Yeah. You ever see a guy like that and you'd be like, how'd you meet the bank CEO's wife? Yeah. How'd yeah. you do it? Yeah. It's like a porn script that you found on the street and just read it and followed. <laughs> that's, that's the only one, X though. That's the spot. only time I've ever seen that, I think. A sugar I've mama? seen it multiple times. But yeah, that, that was a real sugar mama. Of, like, really? guys have sugar mama. Like a real so one? Like, really? Yeah, like a real so one. So I'm just weak as fuck. You know, I've never seen a black guy have it. It's always white guys. What are we not doing? I don't know. What am I doing wrong? I know. Yeah, Chris, this is more of your alley, apparently. It's like, they racist? I'm not paying for Oh, that. actually, I have known of a black guy that was a, I this guy that I knew that was a sugar baby, I guess. But it was- I don't a, know if any nigga out here would be like, I'm a, I'm a sugar baby. <laughs> yeah. But what, he was a sugar baby? He was a sugar baby, but it was with an older man. Oh, older oh. man. Oh, that's yeah. different. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but then other than that, I haven't heard of any. All right, cool. Well, yeah. Let us know if you, <laughs> you have any money. Money. Or if you are someone with money and, and opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you guys could be their sugar babies? Is that what this is? That's what we're kind Hosted of right by now. Sam Levine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, article. <laughs> Whatever, we'll skip it. Target seeks was... to entice workers with pay of up to $24 an hour. Workers at Target stores and distribution centers in places like New York, where competition for finding and hiring staff is the fiercest, could see starting wages as high as $24 an hour this year. The Minneapolis-based discount retailer said Monday that it will adopt minimum wages that range from $15 to $24 an hour, with the highest pay going to hires in the most competitive markets. It currently pays a universal starting wage of $15 an hour. The new starting wage range is part of a company plan to spend an additional $300 million on its labor force this year that will also include broader factors faster access to health care coverage for its hourly workers. The market has changed to Target CEO in an interview with the Association Press. We want to continue to have an industry-leading position. This minimum wage now is going to be, for Target, $24 an hour? Yeah. 15 to 24. 15. It's, it's set at 15 right now. It's oh, going to go up 15. to 24. Oh, it's, it's, go, oh, it's going from, from 15 yeah, yeah, to yeah, it's 24. Gonna, yeah, it's going to go up yeah. $9. Wow. Yeah. Which okay. is insane. Target's about to see. That's yeah. more than the, WNBA gets paid, all the players. <laughs> It is. Yeah, so I mean, they've it always sucks. been. Um, it says they've always set the mark for retail industry. They announced in two thousand seven, two thousand seventeen, they increased their wages to two, to fifteen dollars an hour. We're about to see also Target. Like we're about to sorry. watch Target's employees turn into kind of like In and Out employees, or like 
I think Chick-fil-A like Nordstrom, employees. Chick-fil-A. Like Just prideful as hell. When you treat your employees right, then your whole organization gets so much better and like gets yeah. looked at as such a more positive thing. And it also That's sets great. the bar for your competition to also yeah. raise their shit, prices you don't have to be too. College, you don't have to be college educated. I know Costco pays pretty well, I've heard. I had I used to have a lot of friends I went to college with that used to work at Costco and they had like great benefits. $24 an yeah. hour is a, is a huge jump from 15 yeah. to 24. Like I'm joking about the WBA thing, but also how much money is that actually for the minimum uh, 40 hours, I mean not minimum, for the, the normal the veterans, 40, you know? 40 hours a week. Twenty four dollars an hour. How much, How much money is that? Yeah, yeah. Working every, you know. No, but they might. Well, that's that's a, a fifty thousand dollars salary essentially. Forty, uh, yeah. Just under fifty thousand dollars salary, hmm. which is pretty dope for working at Target. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, because you could be sixteen years money. old and work at Target. I think you, you can, can yeah, but you are you getting the twenty four? You ain't on the max contract. No, you got to prove your still... years here. Oh, is it? But it's entry. There's, you said it's entry. entry. Level's I'm 15 sorry. And they're raising. Yeah. They're raising the, the 24. You in, you're entering. You making 50 racks at high school, a year from work. You can't do that at high school because you're at school. But making 40. You can yeah. You can make some good extra money. Some legit I mean, money. And why are you in school? So I I always think it when when minimum wage is like 750 an hour somewhere, and I just imagine somebody working yeah. a whole like night or even double shift and making yeah. like a hundred bucks. And I think that's super fucking unfair. Of course. Um, and like, I don't understand how that's a livable wage. It's not. Yeah. Um, what, did, what, what are solutions? Like, like actual <clears throat> solutions, of course, saying the rich pay more taxes. I agree there. I agree with a lot of different things, but like, what are the actual actionable items in which the country is like, Hey, what are we doing to wage, the gaps, you know, uh, not only um, in class, but also as, especially in black black communities mm-hmm. as well. Like, what are the what are the plans the country's actually putting in place? I think raising the minimum wage to a specific number, and then also capping um, like, like affordable housing and making that more of a popular thing, and mm-hmm. and capping like how much you can charge for rent in different places. I mean, I think it's insane. I think I saw this thing on Twitter um, last week that was talking about how like different cities across America that have almost doubled in the median rent in like just a year or two. And it's just like, it's insane. And when one person does it, multiple can do it. And then you just kind of get pushed out of the communities that you're in. Yeah. 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 And I, and I had one. Oh, no, I'm just thinking how crazy it is. How, oh, like, I also it's think- not actually like just different. Like, like it just it just bothers me. I know as we come in on this podcast each week, it bothers me as we talk about and we think about Ukraine. And it bothers me as we think about things like this, because it just feels like big business, corporations, institutions, uh, um, powerful families all have and have had the solutions for as long as they wanted them. They just don't care to solve them because they're not their problems. Mm-hmm. They're problems that if they solve them, they become problems for them, actually. And what they have built, the institutions they have built in different things. Like when we even think about within this country, like, oh, if we solve these things or if we give the reparations or blah, 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 it becomes problems for the powers that be that have already made, you know, the 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 power shift on their side and, and have already rigged the game. If they solve most of these issues, they become their problems. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. there is no reason, and, and that's why we never get to so, real solutions because you have to find ways for these powers that be in these big companies and institutions for them to make money off of you know, solving any of the, the lower classes' problems. Yeah, well, being like, we're destroying the planet, we're destroying the air. And it being like, yeah, but Tony sells oil. Come on. We like Tony. Yeah. Like, let's not put if, if you put a bunch of time and focus into doing something like figuring out solar energy, like that's going to cost money and take time. Well, of course it is. But like, it's a necessary thing to do. Yeah. But I don't know. I Yeah, I understand what you mean. It's hard for people to make change. I do think corp- these corporations like especially people who are making record profits, like put money into their workers mm-hmm. to live a living wage. You it know what I forced. mean? It should almost be yeah. forced by the government 
uh, as much like, yeah, to put <clears throat> to put certain money into it, like just to watch different companies. And I'll just use the obvious one example is like Amazon. Well, Walmart, I just read Walmart pays twelve dollars an hour. Yeah, so and, yeah. An example. But but will but will that force the hand? I hope hopefully it does. But will that force the hand of other? Um, actual companies like if Target goes up to twenty four dollars, will that force Walmart to be competitive and at least say twenty two, or they'll end up losing more workers? I mean, in. also like I think I think the worker quality you get at Target is better than the worker quality you get at Walmart. It is so like I mean there is going to be a bottom at one point, but I think even that bottom deserves to be a living wage. Yeah, you think that's branding though? Do you think this all starts with branding? And, and I don't know. I think it actually starts with paying people with their worth i yeah. think that's why they get better people no, you, versus walmart no you get better people but people still have to work regardless you're yeah get, and you're always going to have, you're have people a who, yeah, person who have who, to work but somewhere also you probably appreciate the company that you're at more so you're going to work harder and yeah. you're going to be happier about going to work like if you can actually live off the salary that you're making it's going to change the quality of life i'll even say i'll even say this and i may i may be wrong or whatever but i won't even say a better worker I'll say you'll get a more enthused worker for sure. Yeah. When you feel like you have more skin in the game in any in any business, you feel more enthused to work. You feel more eager to say, you know what, I'm a part of this actually, what we're mm -hmm. building, whatever mm -hmm. it is. I'm appreciative. Yeah, I'm appreciative. Yeah. Like, because if, if I'm able to build my home, then for me, it, it makes sense that I'm going to take care of the other home that yeah. allows me to build my home. But if I'm not able to actually ever get a home, and when I say home, I mean, so not just somewhere to just just lay your head, but somewhere to actually call home that mm -hmm. you feel as though feels comfortable and a, and a feasible living. Then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go hard for you every day. Period. If I gotta go in each day, and I know no matter what, my clocking in does not have any uh, um, actual payoff at, at my actual home. Like if I gotta just leave, if I gotta stress here and leave here to more stress, there's no yeah. way I'm gonna work hard. Yeah. 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 If and, you're not and, solving any and of I problems, think that should be the goal of the yeah. corporations too. Is of like, or, or even the goal of small businesses. Like part of our job is to create a home for the people who work for here sure. and create us a company, you know, like you, and you should be able to provide for your employee like that. And yeah, then there should be small business sanctions if, if the businesses can't afford to do both. But what I see is that a lot of people are complaining about inflation, but also we're not talking about, these companies have record profits. So if yeah. you have record profits and there's inflation, like what the fuck's going on? Mm -hmm. We you going know, up. It, it's just those people up there it's are paying stuck. themselves more. And it's kind of the same exact thing yeah. with this idea of you want to talk about being themselves able a lot? to pay your, what would that mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> but be able to pay your employees as well. I'm sorry. I'm over. Let's I'm go over that meme. That meme. Yeah. I thought we could go transition into someone getting paid a lot. The meme, the guy that posted the meme, uh, uh, I think it's SD Lager. Uh, SD Lauder. Oh, the SA Lauder. Okay. SA Lauder. Thank you. Estee Lauder senior executive John Dempsey forced out after sharing racist meme he reposted without reading. Racist or funny? But continue. <laughs> racist. Oh, sorry. Estee Lauder senior executive John Dempsey has been forced out of the company after he shared a meme on Instagram that featured a racist slur. NBC News reports that Dempsey was given notice on Monday, less than a week after he shared the offensive meme. My nigga Snuffy done got the Rona at a chingy concert. <laughs> read the meme with edited Sesame Street art. First in a statement all, shared on Wait, Instagram. so it's it's Snuffleupagus in bed yeah. and Big Bird. Big Bird got a mask on next to him. And and the and it's Big Bird saying the words. What does he say? My nigga, my nigga Snuffy then caught the Rona at a chingy concert. Oh and my god. Was it has it in? At a chingy <laughs> concert? Is it? Okay. That's it. I just think that's uh, needs to be spelled out for those who are listening. <laughs> I think this is. Oh, you you want to finish it? Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so what happened? Is this his private? In, this is public verified Instagram. This is public page. This is page. Um, the decision is a result of his recent Instagram what posts, which do not reflect like? the values of the Estee Lauder companies, have caused widespread offense, are damaging to our efforts to drive inclusivity both inside and outside our walls, and do not reflect the judgment respect of our leaders. According to the New York Post, Dempsey worked with the company for 31 years, and his salary for the 31. fiscal year ending June 30th. 
2021 was 9.6 million. The graduate of Stanford and New York University Stern School of Business has worked in the cosmetics industry since the early 90s. Um, I also would like to note that it was later reported that he was not fired, but that he was asked to leave and he left on his own president. So he's retiring from the company, which makes it seem like he's still going to get some type of like severance, severance, package. some severance package for sure. Uh, I will say this much $10 million. If that was your, your annual mm -hmm. uh, uh, retainer or your actual salary, you're fine. Yeah, you, you're okay. You, you right saved now. enough money. You're rich enough. You have money invested in all kind of things, tied up in other places that this doesn't even matter for you. You were going to probably retire anyway if you've been working for this long. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe you wanted to go out with a pop of meme. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe you was like, nigga, this. First of all, the meme is such a group chat amongst. It was definitely supposed to be sent to his Finsta. It was supposed to be a group <laughs> chat amongst, on his amongst, he forgot amongst which his black he friends. On. <laughs> it's so specific of like, my nigga Snuffy. Chingy? My nigga Snuffy. <laughs> my nigga Snuffy. They called the Rona at a Chingy concert. Chingy for, didn't even know he had a concert coming up. <laughs> Chingy was like, nigga, I've not performed in at Wait, least 15 is years. Wait, is this guy black or white? White. white. Yeah, he's white. Okay. Yeah, oh, no, white. no, Chris. We're getting there. I was like, what group chat is this? Oh, this oh no. Yeah, this it's guy. just the it's just the meme is such like no, the meme it's not is... even it's not even like commercial black me like no. twitter or or instagram it's niche it is like legitimately like he is in group chats where they <laughs> forgot he was there he was like i gotta post this on my page and somebody should have been there and be like no nigga we forgot you were even in here but legitimately i think the post is pretty funny i just don't think it should come from him obviously uh, it is a problem with him being, well, he wasn't the CEO. What was he? But I will say he was um, a senior executive. A senior executive getting 10 mil But a I mean, year. it's like bleeped out. It is bleeped Nigga out. It is bleeped out. I will I, say that. So oh, that's why oh, I'm like, I, that it's is not thing. like that, it that's, was that's written That's good out. to know. I almost brought that up too. That is an interesting that's point. That's why I personally, I don't see, I mean, I don't think it's that racist. For him I didn't talk. know it was bleeped out and it kind of, I don't I mean, know. What if it says my nigga Snuffy? Yeah, but it's like bleeped out. It's, so it's just N like, star star yeah. star A. Yeah, I'm Could with be you. Ninja. Look, I, I'm no, we won't do that. We won't do that. That's fine. Uh, also, I'm not. I'm not even. I think the post itself is funny. I'm not gonna argue. It's not nigga. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm not gonna no, argue. No, I know. So you know A white like person on, cannot post that. Okay, but on Justin the Boy's page, <laughs> where he like posts things. And Justin like, the Boy is a cultural page. I know, I know, I know. But white people repost his stuff all the time, and if it's bleeped out, oh yeah, whatever. So where are people us? cross out nigga um, things all the time. People will cross it out, and then just are these keep white it going. people? Are these white these are, girls I who are fucking people. black dudes who think they have the right to post these? So if something, if a post has the word nigga in it crossed out or not white people can't repost it okay if it's crossed out that is different than doing a star 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 how and then is it different in, in a for me crossed out if you don't see nigga is literally a blank it goes like blank. can you keep no, 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 the no, no, no. so people see know it. what it's word is that like, also i don't know this. if black people want any white person saying my nigga in any way shape or form like the, oh, that's the, why I, the didn't, I didn't even think of the, the way that you can repost things is is not something i don't think black people want to hear my nigga from a white person at least i don't i don't want to hear my nigga from a white person period i also don't think i want to see any of my white friends posted my nigga it's about also how you make people feel yeah. and this person works at a company is it racist or not you got a corporation fam you're a professional you are also at an executive level where you are getting paid 10 million dollars a year it is not worth it, or or at least your thought process. I don't even know what you went through of like, oh, I'm gonna lose my ten million dollar a year job over a chingy meme. I wonder nigga, what type of content. Went, that's chingy what I'm wondering. What is wish this? He had that money. I'm like, was this an accident? Like, did your kid post this? Because I'm like, what is this? No, no. Since he's got fired, he's posted like seven more. He has. He, no, has, he posts joking. like memes. He just does a whole bunch of my nigga memes like, now. What is his? He name? changes his page. Just <laughs> my nigga memes. <laughs> Like I've been doing this. He posts no. makeup stuff. But but Snuffy, oh, wait. he does post a lot of Sesame Street stuff. Hold on, <laughs> <laughs> this is a Sesame Street. So he thing. does post like memes and shit though. It's not like super yeah, out of the ordinary. Specifically order. Sesame memes. <laughs> oh, here's a Batman and Robin one. Okay, so he does post stuff like he that. Posts memes, he posts memes, but none memes. of them got my nigga in them. But I'm he not... he definitely justified it by its start out. 
He definitely in his yeah. mind was like, it's start out. And I'm not even saying when I read it, like, honestly, I, it's about how you make others feel. And I'll say at a time he made enough people feel away or the, the, the thought of people feeling away was enough yeah. that we'll do with, we will do away with you because, um, when I read it, I'll say as a person who can be super sensitive in my blackness at times and I want things I don't want white people to say or do, I can be super sensitive in that. Uh, I ain't feel no way. When I read it, I thought the meme was funny. I thought for him to lose his job from this was even more hilarious. <laughs> I was like, nigga, like for you to go out this way is crazy. It is such a niche post. Honestly, and for it to come from the SD lot, nigga, is even crazier. He does post a lot of memes and absolutely none of them make sense. And now I'm kind of starting to believe that he didn't read it. And he was just like, ooh, well, Sesame Street post. Let oh, he, no, he said he didn't read it. Okay, yeah. And I feel like that makes sense because I also, looking at him, I don't think he think I don't think he knows who Chingy is. But my nigga, <laughs> it kicks off with my nigga. <laughs> Did he not read the first two He had words? to read. I mean, he had to read it, but maybe, I mean, I don't he know. He just probably went, that's funny. Can I... I have a vision of this person, but I don't really know who they are. Also, oh, you is see Big Bird? What are they like? He's white. Oh, he's white. Um, how are we identifying I Big Bird? It. I don't know. Maybe we want to cut this part. But I see it as a gay dude who's like this is him. posting. I don't know. He uh -huh. wakes up for a makeup corp. I don't yeah. know if that guy's like a fat gay dude who's like crazy and throws shit out there. I don't know. I do what I want. I'm a great of against that example. Me. Yeah. I could see him be like, I didn't even know. I just thought it was funny. And I reposted it. What if Big no. Bird And I is still black. think he needs to face consequences, no. though. What if Big, Big Bird no, is black? No, because that, that's telling gay people they can get away with saying like stuff just because they That's get. true. I, I basically do either way think that he needs to learn that that's probably not a cool thing to do. I also yeah. thought this conversation about... That's like a black dude about, saying some homophobic stuff and being like, I'm black. I'm a part of an oppressed group. I can do that. You'd be like, no, that is still fucked up. Yeah. You can't just say my nigga just because I'm gay. It's like, that has nothing to do with you. That's true, not, true, true. It's like them like not putting on a gay voice and doing... It's like that type of joke too. It's because you're taking on someone else's thing and mocking it. I don't know. Maybe yeah. cut that gay shit. I just, was just <laughs> thinking about. I was just curious. I was just no, I was what between, between friends. Between <laughs> friends. I was just wondering if he's a cosmetics guy. <laughs> If he's, he's like, if he's <laughs> like swinging by the hip in West Hollywood, no, I'm not disagreeing with you. Just shots that person needs the to street. know too. They can't do that. I I agree. <laughs> yeah, you still should get fired, but I just That's was trying funny. to understand how it happened. Um, but but I am it. Do do you think that white people can repost memes or share memes? Or are we just now I don't know. Are I we just thought, completely receivers? I don't know of I any meme okay. that has y'all can and any n word in it. This is my opinion. I do not know. I do not speak for any other black person except for all of them. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, I I don't believe a white person can post a meme with the n word in it. Period. Even if it's crossed out. Period. Okay. I think it is at a time we have to heal first. <laughs> I've never done we, it. And I don't know if we but ever it was have an interesting conversation. Or we'll ever heal. Yeah. But I think we need to still leave room in the climate that we're in for people to heal and then we make it we reassess this and we re we make a decision later on down the line. But I just don't know if black people feel comfortable with white people saying nigga in any way, shape, or form right I now. Just when when we know that white people are aware of the power of the word right. now. Before they could try to argue, I'm not even saying they could justly argue, but excuse me. But before they could try to argue, well, I didn't know we couldn't do this or this. We've had such a time of education now that for you to post something like that, it's just no room for it. And I do actually kind of believe maybe he didn't fucking see it. There's still no excuse when you are at such a high level yeah. of an executive. You that I can't give you that excuse, fam. As much as I love you and I think your memes are cool, I think I, I, <laughs> I can't give you that excuse yeah. because you make it ten million dollars a year. Can I do a follow up? Yeah. Can you retweet uh, <laughs> jokes with if you make a joke that has the N word in it? If you make literally this joke, can I retweet it or That's is the that same thing weird? As reposting it, what do you mean? If I'm, can I retweet? A, a joke, joke that, that you, you make with the N word in it. Is it is is it a video of me saying it? No, it's it's a it's a written joke. It's a written joke. How is it written? It's oh, like <laughs> I'm it's, trying to maybe it's the... exactly that. Big Bird colon 
and it's that, a meme. That it's a meme. Exact. No, no, no. It's, a, it's a tweet. It's joke. a fun. It's just some joke. It's like I don't think you well, should. You, you uh, do this all the oh. time. You call like you. Oh, him you, calling a cartoon character that is oh. just fucking funny, right? Okay. No. Or you calling a a fruit or like a in an ad, inanimate thing that word is like funny sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or when sometimes you call a white person that and that's fucking funny. Yeah. Am I allowed? If you're like. This blah blah Zolinsky blah blah oh, blah 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 blah, this is and I'm funny. like, that's fucking funny. Yeah, can I retweet that? This is a funny question. I'll tell you why it's such a funny question <laughs> to me. And I have a very funny answer. Every time I'm about to tweet and I make a decision if I want to use the N word or not, if I want to say nigga or not, I decide if I care if white people retweet it. <laughs> I swear to God. Every, I mean, every that's... single time I'm about to post, I make a decision on like, yo. I want to say this like this because it's how I would normally say it. It has nigga in it. But also, I'm then making a decision to then tell who fucking knows, maybe even fit more than 50% of my fucking fan base, y'all can't retweet this shit and y'all can't fucking say this shit because this one ain't for y'all. I'll still choose to do that because it's true to me. But I am very conscious it's of, interesting. of like, hey, if I write down, I wrote a tweet maybe last week that said, um, uh, oh shit, it was something like, um, call a nigga crazy, you'll see a nigga vision. Call a nigga crazy, you'll see a nigga vision. And for, I was watching the Kanye uh, Genius doc, and it was just like, everybody want to call people crazy until a vision is complete until you see something through people will call you crazy 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 because it makes them comfortable they're projecting it makes them feel comfortable and calling you crazy and being like that there's no way right right that person can do that I, no i can't do that and it's like but that hasn't do that person don't do that to that person like you don't know if not if that person can uh do that so it was just like me being like calling nigga crazy uh or seeing nigga vision and it was like only only Kanye's close inner circle really saw his vision and was like, this dude could be something. This dude is something. This dude is great. But everybody else felt very comfortable calling him crazy. And uh, and I can understand that whole sentiment, but I can't retweet it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. no and, that, and that sucks. So it's just time time for white people to fave. So it, I'm cool with that. Yeah, that is definitely <laughs> telling favor. And I'm also cool with white people just being like, I can sit this one out. That's such a problem that's with got, them. That's, got a that's hard, such a problem that's with them. That's my <laughs> strategy. It's like, damn, that's funny. Well, yeah. <laughs> I you just keep it right it. there. Damn, that's funny. I'm cool with that too. But I yeah. also am like, I'm okay with us getting together and talking what about if it. I text, what if I text a white friend like, hey, this Snuffleupagus meme is pretty funny. Again, these aren't situations if, if where you, I like if, need to. If you sent if you sent the, the Snuffleupagus meme to your white friend, I wouldn't be mad at that as long as it's because it's not saying nigga. Like it didn't spell it out cool, right? It's bleeped. You thought it was funny. You could think you could be a, a hip hop fan, quote unquote, and know that Ching ain't been around for a while. You find the humor <laughs> in that as well. You have a lot of different things that bring you to a point of laughing, right? So I'm not. I'm not is 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 it's with the intent. I'm okay mm -hmm. with you sending that to your friend if there is no intent, but hey man, imagine Snuffy getting <laughs> COVID at a chingy concert and it stays there. It doesn't make much sense. It's so niche, but cool. We laugh there. If um your friend writes you back and say like nigga that's crazy or anything <laughs> Whoa. or anything that yeah. feels like yo we comfortable here versus visitors uh then it's a problem yeah <laughs> that's funny hmm. that's good i feel like we established <laughs> gary payton says Shaq would use the bathroom and bucket and pour it on rookies Gary Payton and Shaquille O'Neal have plenty of history as teammates from their time in Los Angeles to their days in Miami, and the glove is finally touching on some of their more interesting memories together. Payton's recent interview with Vlad TV has been making the rounds thanks to a particular clip in which he said that Shaq was the ultimate jokester when they played together jokester. and gave one example of the pranks he used to pull. We used to always play jokes, Payton says in the above clip. Shaq is a jokester, so if one of the rookies would be in the stall, he would take a bucket and use the bathroom in it for about a week, and then all of a sudden, he oh my God. 
This is so gross. And then all of a sudden he would pour it on them. Peyton didn't what specify was what was in the bucket, bucket, but you can use your imagination. Why didn't he I also told a story about out. another prank that he himself played on Shaq. As Peyton explained, he once stole Shaq's underwear at night, a now framed pair that he still owns, and messed with his pants, forcing him to be free balling with a towel on in his truck. What? He'd get hey in man, his truck and ride get around. This. this is one time me and, me and that nigga Shaq, we, we had sex. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. That guy's a real jokester. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga's like, what? He like, told me he loved me during it. <laughs> He, it's just like I don't know what these stories. Why is why are so many of our favorite athletes, <sighs> Hall of Famers, old heads, falling victim to the new day and age of like clickbait and like, hey, how can I also be famous again during this day and age? And I just no, think they tell these you, outrageous I think stories. He, I thought he was telling this as like a. I mean, do you think he knew the gravity? For, for some reason, I think I watched this, right? It's a video, right? Because I don't think he realized the gravity of what, like, he was saying the prank was. Like, I don't think he was like, I think I'm going to go on this show and I'm going to tell this jo this story about Shaq, about how he poured his feces, feces on a man. He didn't say feces, did No, he? no. His, oh, his fucking, man. His human waste on a man. And why'd you say feces? I, I feces. don't know. I guess feces Was is he a only, gorilla or something, Chris? I couldn't think of another word. Did get you into a, a real white race war? Oh, no. That's yeah, not I'm what joking. I'm trying to do. I'm joking, everyone. Uh, but I, I, I think I think it just came up, and he was like, isn't this crazy? And forgot that his frame of reference was an old guy, and they did weird shit. Yeah, I hear you, but I don't be knowing. And the only reason I'm saying I don't be knowing is because during this day and age, from Scottie Pippen to Karl Malone to all these different people, you've just heard so many, like, crazy interviews and stories of them being, like, like giving out information that I would deem as, like, private or <laughs> that I would deem as, like, yo, oh. if you guys have any kind of, like, I don't know, man, like, like, you know, Donald Trump was wrong and like locker room talk thing, but also like there is still a code and ethic to like if we were teammates, if we did some weird hazing thing, even if it wasn't, if it was weird, cool, let's leave it in the past. I'm pretty sure Shaq doesn't want to hear why he's on TMT. Hey, Gary Payton just made a statement about you throwing piss on rookies. Like it's like, I'm not, I, I was maybe as a youngin, I didn't mean it. It was weird. Okay, that was wrong. Why are we talking about this? Yeah, he's probably super embarrassed of it, but also doesn't want to like be brought into this whole like. Because it's like Shaq does so many positive things, and for us to even be right now, to, Shaq buys everybody in fucking line behind him groceries. He buys laptops. He buys TVs and fucking cars for families he does he sews back into the community non-stop and do you think gary Payton payton knew the gary media Penis. cycle he, <laughs> <laughs> do you think he knew the media cycle he was creating or do you think he nah, was just nah, like I, gary I exist I at I parties and when i tell this crazy story about Ch shack for mp everybody goes no way now, i will say this much i'll i'll the whole bunch of ogs and, and like people within basketball and different industries that I feel like are kind of looking for this weird cl clout chasing. They looking for like this kind of like, I want to be famous again and this is my time again. And you guys don't remember me? Like I think Scotty Pippen goes through like, you guys don't remember me a lot. Mm. And like he's one of the greatest players to ever play basketball, but also he's not going to ever be Michael Jordan and that he's always lived in that shadow and he's kind of We started remember to, you, Scotty. He's, but he's kind of resented Mike in some ways more recently. He's resented a lot of fans in that way of like, y'all don't fucking remember me the same way. I think Gary Payton is a motherfucking Oakland legend. He a G and I don't think he won that is trying to clout chase for sure. I think he forgot that he was talking right. shit. Yeah, because like it's, Payton, a, it's a party story he has. But also Gary Payton is known if you, I uh, know you're not, you might know this. I know Gary Payton, but I don't know he's, he's known. known as the biggest shit talker to ever play basketball. Mm. So as you can imagine, every time you see him, he's a big three coach. Every time you see him on any clip, he's talking shit. So if you can imagine, he's just shit talking on his podcast. Yeah. But it's just more like, yo, why are you bringing up this man throwing piss no. on people? He this didn't not realize story, how Gary. fucking intense Yeah, it's not the story, man. It's not the but story, it's also though. disgusting that Shaq fucking did that. I don't want to even bring it up. I don't, do I don't so. really even like Can that. Because I want to get Shaq on this podcast. Thing. I want him oh, definitely that'd be fantastic. Yeah, that'd be dope. <laughs> well...
Hopefully locker room culture. Well, he was like, yo, I'll come on the podcast <laughs> if you guys allow me to throw a bucket of piss on y'all. All right, y'all. Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Shaq piss. Like, Shaq like it's does. different than other piss? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, Shaq piss. Oh. It smells like Shaq piss in here. <laughs> <laughs> we never got so the smell specific. of Shaq piss. Out of that house. I was reading an article that said um, how the house is just now making, they're just passing a bill that is making lynching a federal hate crime. And I just thought that was crazy that in 2022, lynching is just becoming a federal hate crime. Um, I, 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 like I guess they be. would say, oh, we can't pinpoint it to an actual hate. Maybe they were just hanging a person. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, you know, when there's history, when there's data. When there are facts, when there is a resume from the whites, you have to still that take it into account. That is not the only way to kill somebody. Yeah. Yeah, at all. That's such a weird... Yeah. Yeah. That's... You know, is it... I don't know. What, what, was it not federally illegal? Yo, and where was it? Like... No, I don't know if it wasn't illegal. I think it was illegal because it's murder. Uh, I think right, it's, it wasn't federally illegal. Whether it wasn't a hate, hate crime. crime. Yeah. And like, yeah, and we're, who was fighting for this not to be a hate crime? Right. <laughs> they yeah. should be investigated. <laughs> who they have to convince? There like, was somebody who was like, okay, imagine the circumstance. Here's a circumstance where it's not a hate crime. You hang someone who is a different race than you, but it just has nothing to do with their race. I just think hanging anybody nowadays is... Uh, There's nothing but hate in that. There's, there, I, I don't hang see anybody. a situation in which there isn't hate involved no matter what the circumstance is. Yeah, I feel like it, if you hang anybody, there's so hate. So what if it's two best friends? It's a double suicide. They're an interracial best friend couple. One of them dies first. The other one was there. He decided not to go through with it. So there's no way we can make this federal hate claim just in case that... 90s movie exists one was black right yeah the yeah. one who went through with it it's like only dark jokes here okay is that about black people dark no what i'm jokes? saying is that's the only i'm joking you said dark jokes in the room i said oh. about black people mm. all right also who was vote? yeah who was voting against it that's wild here he is again <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> here he <laughs> comes in with a drink <laughs> Group chat is having a discussion, and I'd like to bring it into the timeline. Could you eat a thousand fries in one sitting? How big are the fries? Well, yeah, are they skinny are the fries, fries or are they yeah. like steak fries? I, I think these are all good questions. This is the only thing I read, and I said, well, I'd like to discuss that with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> because how much fries is a thousand fries, even if they were a skinny thousand fries? fries? You think That's you get it? A lot. You're saying those angel how hair ass fries? fries? How many fries? Yeah. A thousand. A thousand, but I mean, what size and like well, what type of fries? Curly let's fries. say they're fucking. Because curly fries, fries. Skinny ass curly one. fries go on forever. So like one fry is like yeah, 18 is fries, true. man. No, we're going to say McDonald's fry. Let's try standard, McDonald's fry. Standard fry. Standard McDonald's fry. Yeah. McDonald's is a standard fry. A thousand. How many do you think go into a, a normal McDonald's like, like a container? Large. A large. Maybe like 70. I think we can find an answer. Yeah, let's look. It might be less than 70, huh? How many fries are in a McDonald's large? Approximately 86 fries. I said 70. Ooh, I was thinking in the 70s. 80, 86. So 86. 86. So let's let's so just round it up to a thousand. big large. Can I eat, can I eat 10 big, orders of a big large? They put a little extra on top because you get some in the some bottom. Some in the bag. Some in the bag, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so can I eat 10 orders of fries in one sitting? I, I hope not. I don't. I, don't I hope I love Honestly, myself enough not to. I, I think if I was super hungry. And you were like, yo. How long do you have? I can eat it. I can eat it. I can, I can eat it. Yeah, I can eat it. I, I, look, I don't want to be so hard on myself, but I know I can eat it. Do you I think can you can eat it? What, yeah, what is one sitting? Like, because a one sitting could be, I mean, it could be a long dinner. I can like do one hours. sitting. I can for right. sure eat it. Because I can like. And if I smoked, what? Yeah, if I smoked, I could eat. I could eat a large fry in like three handfuls if I'm really feeling like that. Because I could be like, fuck it. <laughs> Oh, you're gonna speed eat them? these? 
Oh, uh, are we? Is this not man versus food? I mean, <laughs> I, I think I think it's know. one sitting. I don't know what's going on. I think you have up to like two hours. Yeah, I think in it's two like hours, I can two definitely two hours. Get yeah. So you how do you do 20. it? Are you gonna <laughs> just? <laughs> are you? I, are you gonna slowly pick at them? Or are you gonna go handfuls, no. handfuls, okay, okay. handfuls? So, I think you got to mix it up. So first of all, the rule is this. Two hours. I I can't do two hours unless they are supplying hot fries for the two hours. Mm. I don't want to eat no fucking cold fries. Doc, your demand is met. (laughs) (laughs) That's a reasonable demand. That's a reasonable demand. So if if that's the case, I can 1,000% eat what a thousand of them? Yeah, I can body a thousand. I'm not proud of myself. Ten orders as of I, fries. I, believe me, as I answer this question, I don't think ten orders of large. That doesn't fries. even seem like that much. It's not that much. It's not that much. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so much. I think I can do like honestly, Chris. I was doing order tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Make me feel weird. <laughs> okay, so okay, let let all right. Let me up it then. What if it's cr- like those those like large cup fries? What if it's thick cup Ooh, fries? The dick fries. <laughs> the the what? dick fries. Like I don't steak want those. fries. Steak I fries. Nobody steak wants steak fries. fries. The, the, like, what do you have Mel's Diner? Yeah. Yeah, Mel's Diner. <laughs> style. Uh, those are diner the worst. style fries. Diner the fries are the worst. Yeah. I think you could lit- you th- how many Because they're full potatoes. They're strong yeah. potatoes, too. They're so heavy. Those are steroided <laughs> potatoes. Strong potatoes. <laughs> 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 they're definitely fighting. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like I could barely do 25. <laughs> I can't do 200 of those. No, it's somehow, somehow, I, yeah, I can barely only do 30 of those. <laughs> I, can, I can do a, I can do 100 of the other, 100, right? No, 1,000. 1,000. 1,000 of the other ones. That's insane. insane. I can do 30 of these. These ones are too fucking big. Can They're I get another fact, Alana? Can I get how many potatoes, how many fries per potato? Of, okay. Like, because I want to break it into potatoes. <laughs> How many? You potatoes? can get about twelve to fifteen fries per potato. That's not true. No, it no. depends on what kind of fries. Wait, can, yeah. can we hear McDonald like for thin? McDonald's is a okay. compilation. It's like it's a whole bunch. It's a collage of fries. I mean potatoes. I think maybe I could get in a How thousand of those fries really thin per fries. potato. They don't even use real potatoes. They don't. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, ready for the conspiracy. I was all in. I don't think there's it's a more there's a better way to do fries exact. than that. They're like, well, technically, what is a potato? They probably kind of just make so, a. So wait, hold on. Yeah. How do they make McDonald's fries? Is it like the way they make burgers, where they turn them into like a play doh? They make McDonald's fries like in and out. They just cut them right there in front of you. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> They're frozen. They do, but do they just kind of make a play doh and then just like? <laughs> I don't like your sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy McDonald's fries. A thousand, a thousand I could eat in one city. Yeah, twelve to fifteen. How much? How much? Wait, how much? Twelve to fifteen fries? Are you telling me that if you ate a thousand, that would mean that you are? That's a lot of potatoes. That's also not true. That's probably small potatoes. That's not true. I don't know. I think you could get about twenty fries per potato. I actually thought it was gonna be more. Let's say you get thirty. So a three ounce potato, you get twelve to fifteen fries. That's a small potato. What's a That's three a small ounce potato? potato. It's a very small potato. Yeah, <laughs> they're not using like the russet potatoes. Still, let's say they're very small potatoes. That's like, bro, we already went over like this. That's like a hundred. I pot- could do a thousand potatoes in one sitting easy. A thousand potatoes? I mean, a thousand <laughs> fries in one sitting easy. Yeah. You think you can eat seventy potatoes? That's, I don't know if that's the right math, but I'll say this much. In two hours? <laughs> that's wrong, though. Also, 70 What's is not 70 the right number. times 12. McDonald's is not having no motherfucking 12 to 15 per potato, fam. It's more than that. And I feel like... McDonald's mm. using different kind of potatoes, too. I'm giving... I'm saying that... I'm saying that... Oh. Okay, so... If there's 15 of them... If if there if you get fifteen fries out of a potato, seventy potatoes is a thousand fifty fries. So sixty nine potatoes. Sixty nine small potatoes in two hours. <laughs> sixty nine small Bruh, potatoes. How much am I winning for this? Is this man versus who? What am I winning for this? A mil- You're winning millions of dollars. Millions? What? Yeah. Easily, Chris. Yeah. I could do Easily. that shit without even millions of dollars. You I would do that for like two hundred thousand. I'd be like All less. Right. I would how- do it for less. <laughs> Remember, oh, this actually is an episode of Family Guy. I guess I tried to do it for like 500 bucks. This is an episode of, 
<laughs> it's an episode of Family Guy. Peter Griffin did this, and he had to eat a certain amount of burgers in um in a time period to break a record and win some money. And he had a heart attack. <laughs> and he had, I'm sorry, he had a stroke. He had a stroke right there in the middle of the burger joint, and uh, half his face went dead. So there's, you know. Well, that's the that, I mean, that, I didn't know guys. you watched that documentary. That's, <laughs> I ate a thousand fries. I'm typing it into YouTube. I could eat a thousand Popeye's fries so easily. I no, those are longer. I like Popeye's. Sixteen twenty French fry challenge. It has forty one million views. Easy. I'd be famous too. I'm yeah. Side note. Shout out to hundred K. Hundred K, we never brought it oh, up. Oh yeah. Thanks, guys. Shout out to hundred K, a hundred K, a hundred K. Yeah. All yeah. because of y'all. We a community W dubs. Throw the dubs up. Throw the dubs up, y'all. Throw the dubs up. That's not a thing. Okay, we Can never discussed this at all. It's not even a real <laughs> thing. No one wants to do it. Your I'd say you make a double with you with your whole body. Love YMCA with the YMCA style. style? <laughs> oh man, we gotta. You trying to get me on a meme? YMCA. It's fun to stay at the Y. How did the YMCA get such a marketing budget? Was that a budget? They were fucking. Oh, they were traveling. They were they? a Christian association, right? That's what it is. Young Christians, no, young, young men's, men's Christian men's association. association. Yeah, and they like house people. And they did like a how they get a fucking record deal and a budget. No, that's just the village that's people's the village, yeah. indie hit. I don't know. But if I'm they saying you were, Oh, you don't think it's product placement? Chris? I I think you it don't probably think YMCA is. was like, yo, let me go and cut y'all a check. That every single we we're a Christian organization that allows Indians and I mean Native Americans and construction workers and police. But weren't these guys the pretty members? openly gay? They didn't want to talk about that part. But I mean, with the with the YMCA go like these guys, these guys are the guys we want to give money to. I don't know if um, I mean they were not. What I don't know if the village people were openly gay, were they? Mm. I don't know. I'm asking. Let's look up. Can we get a fact? Village people that? openly gay. I don't even think all of them was gay. You uh, know how it works, Mister Bellolo. No. The construction who worker, I guess, straight as fuck. So yeah, some of them are straight. Some of them nah, are gay. it was just the macho. Uh, oh yeah, who was the gay person? The sailor was gay. The group's name refers to the, the Manhattan. The construction worker sexuality is unknown. The biker. Is straight. He, the cowboy was gay. The Indian was gay. And, and if you the recast these roles, do you have to be gay already to get the role again? Like, hey, no, the biker was straight. You have to be straight. Mm. We don't want to go against what the biker was. The biker was never gay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm it's asking. also the village people. It's yeah. like the people from Greenwich Village, which was like a gay neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, that's so, the only village you ever heard of? But that's what the you're know, you're, you're, you're starring the N word right now. It's the same, you know. It's the I'm same. I'm doing what <laughs> from the last one of like, like you're why like, you trying to tell me what we're doing again? It's with the not N-word. like it's obviously not ninja. It is the village people, you know. They're yeah. the gay people. But it didn't say all gay. I'm re- we're reading it. Oh well. Why but it know? refers to Manhattan's Greenwich Village, which is reputation as, as a, a gay, gay neighborhood. neighborhood. But, I, I mean, you got to. Yeah, I like that they were like. Not everybody, everybody can be gay in the village. Still, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The village was diverse. So maybe. That's pretty gay, though. But overall, <laughs> together. Yeah, why did gay. they? Gay. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. The police officer is actually Cisco's dad. No. No, nah, I made that up. Right now. It just sounds like. Oh, so, okay, so this is how the YMCA song came what? about. <laughs> So the lead singer and lyricist recalls that while in the studio, producer Jacquees Morali asked him what exactly Jacquees. is the YMCA. After Willis explained it to him, he saw the expression of Morali's face and said, don't tell me, Jacquees, you want to write a song about it. And they quickly wrote the track for the album, Cruisin'. So, so the YMCA, it was fucking the so YMCA. So the YMCA threatened to sue the band over trademark infringement. Damn. And the organization ultimately settled with the composers out of court and later expressed pride regarding the song saluting the organization. So the, was the YMCA during the 80s and 70s known as a, a place you could go have like gay sex? That it was like No, a, the YMCA was I always known, wondered this about no, I'm asking. This is an interesting I don't know. Like, fucking dive yeah. right here. You know, I'm interested. 
Uh, so it said the YMCA being building single room occupancy facilities in the 1880s to house people from rural areas who moved into cities to look for work. Yeah, we know. Um, but we so like, low and, oh, like in like I'm saying like in the actual YMCA, was that why the village people came out? I was like, oh, it's fun to stay at the YMCA mm. because we out here having a good ass time at the YMCA because we having parties and you know and all kind of you know sex capades and shit if it is that's that's fucking a, it's like a negro spiritual for gay people i didn't <laughs> i didn't know this was what they were saying right in front of us and i kind of fuck with it it's kind of cool if that's the case if not i'm a great writer and i made it up <laughs> <laughs> and i made it uh, up Wikipedia i would love say. an answer somebody <laughs> let us know the bill people dropped a new song back in 2013 damn we got new records <laughs> Uh, should we do one more article and a question? We're at yeah, hour 30. let's do it. I mean, the a thousand fries was Chris, not, not a question. Did that you was a good question. did you know as a kid, Chris? Like when you used to be like, it's fun instead. Do I say? Did you associate that with with gay at all, or did you just think like YMCA? Oh, I didn't associate it with gay. I always kind of un- wondered what the fuck it meant and why we were doing the stance. Yeah, you used to do it um, though. Yeah, yeah, What's and I'm dance? also when it's you explain the letters. Well, letters, yeah, YMCA. Yeah. What's the dance? Come on. Well, I didn't know if it was. He's just... like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest dance of all time. Yeah. Is that uh, the first dance you learn? In, like, Mark, that's a know. very wedding dance in my mind. That's like, a wedding, wedding dance. dance? La- I, it's just like a big group of people. It's like the Macarena. It's like it's y'all, a, it's y'all Casper Slide. <laughs> 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 Wait, y'all what are your guys' like wedding dances? This is interesting. I don't want electric slide. Do you? The wedding, so- the wedding songs. You're gonna like the it's ones you're gonna hit. Night. <laughs> oh yeah, those wedding songs. Hey, what wedding songs are you talking about? No, no, no. Wedding about. dances, wedding dances. The wedding yeah. dances. Wedding dances. Yeah, when well, you like, it's time to get loose. What yeah. song is on? Oh. Because I think you're hey, gonna Lord, get a macarena <laughs> at one point. Really? Okay. Especially growing up. I believe that. What else you got for me? I think you're gonna get a soldier boy at one point. Oh, crank that! Wow. Yeah. yeah, you're yeah. gonna go crazy on yeah, that. Yeah, I think soldier boy is a wedding dance for It's a wedding dance forever. What's love? Without Everybody soldiers, not. what's uh, love without Draco? Nothing. I, it's a prom dance, a I wedding was the dance. First it's, <laughs> to bring uh, unions together. You might get, and I might be. I'm mixing kind of wedding with like high school. I'm just thinking about dance songs. You think so? You think you could throw a bucket, a bucket of piss on somebody if you've done enough? Like good. he, he better know that was not the right thing to do. Yeah, but I'm okay. I don't know. I don't. I'm also not, not like in in. You would know what like a locker room culture is like better than me. Is that like? I, Have you ever heard of something like that, or is that like insane? Everybody's different. Everybody's different. I'll start with that. It's like fraternities and everything else. Everyone is different. It's what you deem regular in your environment. We may not deem regular in my environment. I'm from the inner city of Chicago, the, the west side, from the hood. So it's a whole bunch of shit. Even when you watch ridiculous, is I watch it. I watch videos. I see different stuff, and I'm like, black people wouldn't do that shit. And I mean that because I the version of black that I grew up around, I can at least say we wouldn't do that shit. I would never throw piss on somebody. I would never spit on somebody. Mm -hmm. There's just certain lines I would never cross because to me, the only thing on the other end of that is death. That sounds very extreme and dramatic, but that's the truth. Like if I'm spitting on somebody in their face, I'm prepared in my head to be like, this could go wherever. Cause I'm yeah, spitting but now on you. You're if I'm gonna piss on you, this could go wherever. Yeah, yeah, but if you're talking about like, yeah, Shaq being, I'm just surprised that the people who received it didn't like. If you, if you, if you, let's just say, hypothetically, you grow up and and you are, you get, uh, just give an example. You get casted for Jackass. You do extreme surfing though. But Jackass is like, we're doing a whole bunch of shit in surfing this year. We'd love to cast you and and shoot with you, become a cast member for this, right? Mm -hmm. You say, cool. Now, the environment of Jackass may tell you that, hey, you could get punched in the dick at any times. You could get spit on. You could get eggs thrown at you. You could get blah, blah, blah. You could get hit by by a car. I don't fucking know. Anything could happen in the environment of Jackass. I think that if that culture, and I hate to say it like Shaq is wrong because I don't think Shaq did any of it with any malice, any intent. Um, but I think if that culture is Shaq is a prankster and Shaq is a jokester, at some point pranks can go too far. 
Yeah. And, and if you don't have anybody there to let you know that prank went too far, then maybe nobody actually believes it went too far. And time only tells. Right. And, 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 and people having more of a voice and standing up for themselves being like, hey, actually, that was too far. And throwing piss on somebody isn't okay. And I do feel this way. But I don't think that uh, I've ever heard of stories of being like Shaq was a horrible person and he did this and he took hazing too far. No. I've heard of him always being a great person. So I think that if he did truly throw a bucket on somebody with piss in it, yeah, he took it too far. But I don't know if his intent was... Fuck you! I'm making you feel Jack's small. Probably and the type of person who like really like treats that person very well. That night. yeah, and it's like, which like I don't know if that makes it okay. I don't know if I want that to be the future, but that is definitely a way that people have existed in so far. Is you like you watch fucking Dazed and Confused where they're like, we're initiating a freshman and they treat him like yeah. shit, and then they're like, just kidding, buddy. Love you, but that's you're and, one of us now. And, but that's, that's very that's fraternity. That's very that's fraternity very locker 90s. room. Yeah, it's very locker room environment of like, yeah. oh, every and it, it's also just like the rites of passage in those people's heads of like, oh, if everyone went through it, then why would you not have to? Like for me, still went too far, but no, you know, I, I yeah. agree with you. I'm just saying, like for me, hooping, like if we if if we got beat up as freshmen, let's just say hypothetically. We, we basketball players and, and the seniors beat us up because they was just like, y'all niggas freshmen. Shut the fuck up. Y'all freshmen. This is a part of the culture. Y'all on the basketball team now. Y'all freshmen. They still nice to us. They still doing all the other shit. Like y'all still in the fraternity. Y'all hoopers. Y'all are boys. But also in the locker room, fuck out of here. Like y'all freshmen. The person that then becomes a senior, yeah, they're, it's a very mature High school, it would be like, I'm not doing that same shit. That was very immature. And actually, we're stopping the hazing guys right now. The person that went through that same exact thing is going to be like, I guess it's tradition. Why would I not punch I went through it you as well. And, yeah, and beat you up. And like, it. yeah, so people are going to haze you. I'm not sure Shaq had pissed on him before. <laughs> yeah. But I am saying that he definitely was hazed for sure. He was somebody's rookie at some point. Mm. Even though he was on a fucking Nick uh, Van Exel. No, he would have been the rookie. <laughs> he would have been like Nick Anderson's rookie. He would have been um, Eddie Jones's rookie. No, he no, played, Eddie Jones no. was young at that point. No, he played for Orlando first. Oh yeah, Shaq was a rookie for Orlando, so he would have been Nick Anderson's rookie. Horace Grant got over there. Oh. Um, he would have been uh, Dennis Scott. Penny um, Hardaway. Penny Hardaway was there at the same time as him, but he came a year after Shaq. Oh, damn. So Shaq, he would have been Shaq's rookie. Oh. That's how it works. So as mm. soon as you come in, you become whoever's rookie. Like, oh, you're... And Shaq's not a vet yet, so I don't know if he can have a rookie in his second year. But he, also, this, he was this an probably, all-star. Did this happen at the Lakers or this happened in the well, Magic? No, no. It's, it's, oh, oh yeah. no, no, no. This, no, no. The Gary Payton story is older Shaq. That's the, the most disgusting part. Where does Gary Payton play with Shaq? He in played in LA? the Lakers, and that was like one of his last years. It was Gary Payton and Carl Malone, like last year. Oh. So they were like all kind of old. Shaq was kind of old, too, to be like, oh, I'm going to throw a piss on you. It's a little wild, but like also, I mean, I ain't trying to judge. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Gary Payton played for Sha with Shaq. No, I'm sorry. I'm lying. Gary Payton played with Shaq twice. He played with Shaq in L.A., and he played with Shaq um, in, in Miami. Miami. Mm, forgot about that that chapter. Of Shaq. Like I mean, I mean, we talk about the news on this podcast, and we talked about it in the opening. Uh, but this week, the Ukraine was invaded by Russia, and um, and we just have seen a lot of uh, power and strength from those people fighting back. We've sometimes seen Russia. We've look seen like Russia clowns. look like clowns at some points. I've really enjoyed watching the world come together and kind of like it, agree on something you know and do been, what's right. You know, it's been good in, in, in a lot of this is that uh, not only has it been great to see Ukrainian um, celebrities and, and figures stand up with their country and really show true patriotism in, in ways of like we'll fight against all of this and. and, and, and Something that I'm actually I envy of them, but also it's been really good to see Russian celebrities and Russian 
athletes, even in a time when Putin has threatened people who have spoken against them and threatened people who have followed against them to say, hey, if you do this, you will have uh, extreme and severe consequences. I've seen Russian celebrities say no to war. I've seen Russian athletes say no to war. And the and Russian been, people yeah, are I'm saying. filling the squares I, despite, uh, you know, being locked up and... I, I read a Pulled thing away by police. Did you read the thing earlier? It was a it was a um a, a text message that was translated from a Russian soldier actually texting his mom and, and letting his mom know he had no idea they were going to war. And a lot of thought, them didn't. She thought know. they were doing training for something, and she was yeah. like, "Hey, we're trying to send you a parcel somewhere where you guys are using parcel." He's like, "Mom, I don't know how to tell you this. I'm I'm afraid. I didn't know we were. They told us that when we were going into Ukraine, that the people were, had already were aware." Where that we were invading, they were gonna surrender things, and everything's gonna be okay. We have been killing people. We've been killing actual civilians, and not just actual government officials. And it is, we've been killing civilians. And and he's like, I don't want any parts of this. So it's just, you know, my heart is extended to to just obviously the people of Ukraine, but also the people of Russia as well. I know that sounds crazy, yeah. but you know, I'm a Christian. I believe in in, in praying for every, everybody, and I feel like, you know, I, I don't. I know that a lot of these people are not fighting by choice. They're in a war, and there is dictatorship. There's a fascist country, and that these people feel like they don't have a, ch a choice either because I can only imagine the consequences of them fighting back against their own country and something uh, 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 of something like this. So I pray for Ukraine. I, I pray for Russia. And I know that sounds uh, cliche and feels like, well, what will your prayers do? I honestly don't have many solutions. Uh, I was telling Chris off camera as a black man here in America, there's not many solutions I have for black people here in America. So for me to have solutions for Ukrainian people in Ukraine against Russia, um, I, I, I don't even understand. I can't truly even wrap my, my head around um, what's going on. But, but from what I can tell, you know, it's just a, a horrific, horrific thing. Um, did we do it? I thought we did it. Thank you, just Liffany and Co. and Fleur. Um, did we do it, though? Yes, we did. Thank you to Alana. That is our episode, Alana. We thank you, Alana. Hey, thank you, Chris Reinecker. Thank you, Stilo Bram. Uh, zip it up. Zip it out. We out, bitches. And stream all them songs and stuff. Y'all, yeah, do it. Bye.